So let's talk about LEDs. If you walk into Home Depot's or Lowe's looking for light bulb, old fashioned ones, good luck. You're not gonna find any of them. Everything these days is LEDs, light emitting diodes. The reason LEDs are popular, first, uh, they use lower energy consumption. They're actually smaller sizes. If you look at the size of much smaller, some of them much smaller than the old fashioned light bulbs. They last long, longer than the old um, bulbs there. And faster switching, meaning what? When you turn a light on and off, they turn on and off much quicker. Especially if you wanna see that, if you walk into a hockey rink and you have the old lights or the old gymnasium, you turn the lights on, it takes 10, 15 minutes before the gym is lit. Now you just turn the switch on, you can see all the lights. Now the way we draw LED actually, it is a light emitting diode. It is a diode and it sends these light signals. So the way we draw a picture of it, we go, this is a voltage source here, just like before, just like the previous video, like Zener diode. We have an RS here and we have a diode here, but how do we know this is an LED diode versus a plain diode? The way we do that, we draw these arrows here to indicate that's emitting light. And if this diode has a voltage of VD, usually about two volts, then we can calculate the current going through that if you wanna find the current we can say the current equals Vs minus Vd divided by R sub S. Now, if you look at LEDs lately, they, you know they come in different colors. There's red, there's green, there's blue. So how do we get the color of these LEDs? How do we make them change color? Well, the color really corresponds to the wavelength energy of the photons. So by using different material, like we use arsenic in them, we use gallium, phosphor, company actually can manufacture a product or LED product with red, green, yellow, blue, orange, or even infrared, which is invisible lights. Now I'm looking around, I see a surge protector in front of me blinking to let me know the green light is on. I can see the green light on it. I look at the TV next to me, I'm watching the video here, and I can see a green light. These are LEDs. So the color ones, we use them to indicate, like to give us an idea, if the power is on or not. We use them in router. I see the router is flickering right there when the signal goes through it. Um, instrument panels in cars in different places. That's where we use the color LEDs. The infrared LEDs or the non-color one, invisible ones, we use that in like remote control. When you push your remote control for your car to open the garage door, you don't see that wave or the LED, the color of that. If you have a security alarm in your house, when you turn the alarm on, you don't see any waves through the room there, but the minute you cross them, you hear the siren there. And the brightness of the LED it really depends on the current that goes through it. So the brightness of the LED depends on the current through it. So the more current that goes through it, the brighter it is. And usually it is measured in millicandles. So when you look at them, usually they have MCD, millicandles. 
And that current going through it is called the luminous intensity. which is IV. So for example, here's our book here. I highlighted one. This is actually for an LED TLDR5400. And notice here, the luminous intensity, that's the current through it, at 20 milliamp, you have 70 millicandles. At one milliamp, you have three millicandles. For this particular LED, actually, the forward voltage, when the thing in forward mode, it's 1.8 volts. And the reverse current, that's the maximum reverse current, is 10 microamp. So you can look at the schematic operation of these LEDs and look at all the information given to us right there. By the way, this LED happens to be a red one, just in case you're curious about it. So where do we use LEDs? An example for that, I'll give you this circuit. Let's say we have our S here, and we have an LED in this direction, that's a red one. I can put a red LED here. And I can put another LED here, a green one here. And let's say we have a voltage source here, and we're not sure if the value is positive or negative. DC voltage here. I don't know if this is, if you look at this box now, I found this red marker here. Only one of these lights is going to be on based on this voltage. So this is actually, this particular device is known as the voltage polarity tester. This tells me if the voltage on this end is positive or negative. Why? If this voltage is positive, if, so let's write down, if, let's call this Vs here, if Vs is positive, this actually will be what? In reverse bias, which means it will not be on, but this will be forward bias, which means current will go through it and you will see the green light. So if Vs is positive, that means green light. Green light will be on. And what happened if Vs is negative? That means this end is higher than that, negative. If Vs is negative, this actually will be in reverse bias. Remember, these don't work in breakdown mode, only the Zener diodes. So this in reverse bias, nothing's gonna go through it. If it's negative, this one reverse, I'm sorry, this one. And this one is gonna be actually in forward mode, which means what? Current will go through it, and the red light is on. So when Vs is positive, you will see the green light on. When Vs is negative, you will see the red light on. That's all it does. As I said, most of these actually diodes have a VD voltage, the forward voltage diode roughly, approximately two volts.
So just an example, if you want to do a quick calculation, if Vs equals, I don't know, 25 volts, what is the current going through it? How big that current? Well, if, if Vs is positive 25 volts, that means this one's off, this is on. So the current's going to travel this way. And if this is on, that means the voltage here is actually 2 volts. So I sub S, or I, whatever you want to call it, is the source voltage minus the voltage of the diode, oops, which is right here, divided by that resistor. Let's take some numbers. Let's assume the resistor is what? 2K. So let's make the, if Vs equals 25 volts and R sub S equals 2 kilo ohm. So that's going to be 25 minus 2 divided by 2K or 2,000. That's what? 23 over 2,000. And my calculus says we're going to have a current of uh, 23 divided by 2,000, 11.5 milliamp. Let's try one more example then we are done with LEDs. Let's take an AC source here. Oh, what is that noise? I don't know what that noise up there. R sub S, let's use an LED here. And a plane, not an LED, a plane diode there. Now, this signal actually you can use that if you want it to indicate an existing of an AC voltage because you'll see it go on and off the voltage when this voltage VS or VAC, we're going to call it. If this voltage is positive, current will go through that and the light will be green. Then, when it goes to negative, we'll go through that. Then when it goes to positive, it goes to this. So you'll see this flickering the whole time, on, off, on, off. The green is on, the green is off. The green is on, the green is off. So used to indicate we have an existence of AC voltage. So when VAC is positive, LEDs on. And when VAC is negative, LEDs off. And we know as an AC source continue positive, negative, positive, negative, so this will continue to flicker. So let's put some numbers on this. Let's assume VAC has a value of 20 volts RMS. And this resistor is 700 ohms. And let's give you VD here for this to be on VD. Uh, let's get 2 volts. The question is, what is the average 
LED current. Okay. VP is equal to the peak value. Remember this RMS, the square root of 2 times 20, which is roughly 28 volts. I sub S, that's the current going through that, is going to be 28 minus the 2 volts, because the current's going to be going this way, divided by 700, which is 26 over 700. And let's see what that number is. 26 divided by 700. And that's 37, roughly, milliamps. Remember, this is a half-wave rectifier. So the average for half-wave rectifier half-wave current is going to be I sub S is going to equal 40 divided by pi from half-wave rectifier. I mean 37, not 40. 37 Point zero divided by pi, and what is 37.0 divided by pi, 3.14, and that's 11.8 milliamp. And that's really all about uh, LEDs, just like normal diode except they emit they emit lights there and it depends on the wavelength. You have different color lights and the voltage normally is bigger than 0.7, roughly two volts for that. I see people waiting outside the door. They want to get in, so I got to stop here.